All right, well, good evening, everybody. Welcome uh, to your free VA home loan seminar. It is indeed free to you, but it does cost money to put on. So it's sponsored by Scott Sakata with iProperty, so you guys can give Scott a hand, please. My name is Tony Diaz, and I'm originally from a place I call God's Country. You know where that's at, sir? Right here. Right here, Paradise. That's right. Waianae, actually. It's on the west side. Yeah. <laughs> Maui. Yeah, why not? That's, uh, that's where I'm from. My dad uh, joined the Marine Corps when I was two years old. He served 25 years in the United States Marine Corps. And then I joined the Marine Corps after graduating from College Hill High School. I did four years as a communication electronic tech, and I got out in 1988. I've been in the mortgage industry for 10 years, specializing in VA loans. So today, my job is to teach you everything I know in two hours. That means I don't know too much, right? Veterans United Home Loans of Hawaii is part of the nation's number one dedicated VA lender. It is not a part of the VA, however. It's an approved VA lender. Uh, so I want to make sure that's clear because I want credit to go where credit's due. VA is not out educating us veterans. They don't have the manpower to do so. So we're out doing this uh, so that the veterans can get as much information about the benefit as possible. So inside your packets, you have this thing called a PowerPoint presentation, right? It's every single slide you're going to see. So I want you to take some notes on it. And the first thing I want you to do is write for me, what do you expect to get from this free seminar? Why are you here? What do you expect to get? You can write that down for me. And after you're done with that, the next question I have for you, you don't have to write the answer down though, is why would a company like us want to spend the time and resources to conduct these free seminars? Why would we want to do this? All right, there's three rules tonight. Actually, there's only two tonight. Two rules tonight, ready? Rule number one is we have to have some fun. Can we all agree to have some fun? Yes. Right on. Rule number two is you have to ask as many questions as you can possibly think of regarding what you see on the screen. So if you see it on the screen, ask away. The only thing I ask is that you don't ask questions about things we haven't covered yet because we will cover them and if you jump ahead, we'll be here for four hours and I don't think you guys want to be here that long. So um, participation is key. So I'm going to ask you again, why would, us, why would a company like us want to spend the time and resources to conduct these free seminars? Yes, ma'am. To educate and help people. To educate and help people, that's for sure. But on most people's minds, they think, well, Tony, you guys do these seminars so you can earn business. Well, the question I have for you, is there anything wrong with giving in order to receive? No, right? Quite frankly, we could stop doing seminars. Our branch in Hawaii alone loaned over $200 million in VA loans. This year, $200 million in VA loans. Can you, just that little branch in YPO Gentry, that's how many veterans we have, helped over 340 families. Pretty amazing, right? Yeah. And we're part of the nation's number one dedicated lender who's loaned over a billion dollars in loans for, for veterans. So pretty impressive, right? So I can tell you how it all started. Back about seven years ago, I was asked to speak in front of the 75 Air National Guard men and women. And after two hours of talking to those young men and women, I realized how little they knew about the benefit. Then I started asking myself, well, Tony, what did you know when you got out of the Marine Corps? Absolutely nothing. I was 22 years old. You think I wanted to buy a house at that age? No. So when I got out, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a VA home loan. My first home I bought in 2001, the lender never asked me, did I serve my country? They just assumed I'm a local boy from Hawaii, so you get to get this FHA loan because you don't have 20% down. So my first loan was an FHA loan, paying mortgage insurance when I didn't have to, but I didn't know any better. When I finally got into the mortgage industry in 2003, they asked me to learn three products. One, conventional loans. Two, FHA loans. And three was this thing called the VA home loan benefit. And I'm going, what is this thing called the VA home loan? Well, it's for veterans, Tony. They can finance 100% with no mortgage insurance. I said, you're kidding me. Yeah, so I didn't even know. So I find it to be my job, my passion, is to educate veterans so they don't go, I wish I would have known that, right? So what are we gonna talk about today? The VA home loan benefit. When did it start? Who's eligible? How does it work? And most importantly, why you, the veteran, should take advantage of it. 
So, the history of VA loans started in World War II. A lot of young men and women joined the military to fight the war. When they got out, the government created some jobs, and then they created this thing called the VA Home Loan Guarantee. Back then, a veteran could buy a home with no money down and no credit score. Do you guys know that's still VA's guideline that there's no credit score? But do you know that there's no lender on the planet that follows that guideline? There isn't, and here's the reason why. VA does not loan money. VA guarantees the money, right? Lenders loan money. So all lenders have different overlays. So if lender ABC said they can't do that, it doesn't mean it's the gospel. It just means that they can't do it. it. does not mean that Veterans United Home Loans of Hawaii can't. So what I'm going to talk about tonight can be done, is being done, and we're doing it. So if someone should have told you it couldn't be done, that just meant that lender couldn't do it. So, if someone tells you they can't help you use your benefit, then you need to go get a second opinion. It's like going to the doctor and the doctor telling you you got something drastically wrong with you. You're not going to just take that person's word for it and go home and crawl in the bed and die, right? You're going to probably go seek a second opinion. Same thing with the VA home loan benefit. Seek a second opinion. So, the problem in Hawaii with the VA home loan benefit was the loan limits were always down here but the price of houses were up here. So back in 2003, the VA home loan limit was $240,000. Anyone think you can buy a house here for $240,000? No, so if a veteran wanted to buy a home for $340,000, that left a $100,000 gap, right? VA says you have to put down 25% of that gap. So 25% of 100,000 is $25,000. Plus pay their closing costs and funding fee Let's just call that $40,000. Not too many veterans walking around with $40,000 in their pocket. So they got switched from the VA loan to the FHA loan that only required a 3% down payment. 3% of $340,000 is $10,200, plus closing costs, let's call it 16 grand. 16 grand versus 40 grand. Piece of cake, right? Well, I'm gonna go with this route, 16 grand. But what happens when people stop using something? They forget about it, right? Well, that's exactly what happened. See, people say, well, it goes away. But it didn't go away. The information went away. People just didn't keep up with it. So when I got out of the Marine Corps in 1988, I used to fix electronics. If this laptop broke right now, I could tell you it's broken because I am that smart. I can figure it out. However, if I open it up to try to fix it, I couldn't fix it because the technology's changed just a little bit, right? Computers are now in here. When I was working on computers, they were the size of a wall. A little different. Um, so the same thing happened with the VA home loan benefit. It's changed since the 80s. It's evolved and it's become this amazing entitlement that's uh, wonderfully, wonderfully made for the veteran. Everything has changed with this benefit. And today I'm going to tell you all about those changes. So who's eligible for the VA home loan benefit? Anyone who served in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, or Coast Guard from September 15, 1940 to as an enlisted person September 7, 1980, or as an officer October 16, 1981. Between these periods of time, all a veteran needed to serve is 90 days during combat or 181 days during peacetime. The 90 days during combat is not 90 days in combat, it's just during combat. So if a person got drafted in Vietnam, and served only five months, but never went to Vietnam, that does, doesn't make them ineligible. It actually makes them eligible because they served during combat. Five months, right? All you need to serve is 90 days during combat, or six months and a day during peacetime. Now, after this period of time, it says that a veteran must have either completed 24 months of continuous duty, or got activated for 90 days during combat, or 181 days during peacetime. But there's other ways somebody could qualify and not serve the two years. They could have got out with an early out. Back in the 80s, there was too much force. They asked us to break our contracts. If you want to get out early, you can get out right now. If you got out early, it doesn't mean you're not eligible for the benefit. You could still be entitled to a VA loan certificate of eligibility. Medically discharged people could get out and not serve two years and still be eligible. The easiest way for someone to find out they're eligible 
is to find a VA approved lender like us and we can pull the certificates of eligibility. And by the way, it's absolutely free to pull a certificate. So, how much do they lose if they fill out the form and go to get their certificate pulled and they're not eligible? What do they lose? Absolutely nothing, right? Just a little bit of time. But what if they are? Can you imagine what they've gained? So there's, some people, there's some people out there who don't know they're eligible. Does your certificate of eligibility ever expire? Does anyone know? Your certificate of eligibility ever expire? No. The answer is absolutely not. But however, back in World War II, Korean War and the Vietnam War, it was 10 years, use it or lose it. So, for prior service active duty, sir, you served prior, prior service active duty before? Yeah. Does the um, Department of Veterans Affairs mail you anything saying the VA home loan benefits changed? No, right? Um, so those people that served during Viet uh, World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam, and they didn't use their certificate at 10 years, they lost it. Now, Congress in the 70s grandfathered them all back in. Certificates of eligibility don't expire. But if they don't mail you anything telling, telling you your benefits change, how would you know your certificates never expired? You wouldn't, right? So we got the privilege of speaking at the Veterans of Foreign Wars Conference that was held here in Honolulu earlier this year. And we met at least five veterans who could not refinance their homes conventionally because they owed more money um, than the 20% equity. But they thought their certificate of eligibility had expired. We helped them get their certificate of eligibility. We could refinance them up to 90% of the appraised value and now they were able to refinance and take advantage of the low rates and save them literally over $1,000 a month in some cases. Pretty amazing, right? They, there's people out there who don't know they're eligible who are. The big one here in Hawaii is this one, Reservists and National Guard. We have a tremendous amount of Reservists and National Guard serving our country. They call them the weekend warriors, right? But they all get activated too. But prior to 1993, no Reservists or National Guard person was eligible for certificate eligibility unless they got activated on active duty for 90 days during combat or 181 days during peacetime. So you could have stayed in the reserves or National Guard for 20 years but never got activated on Title 10 orders and you, would, you wouldn't be eligible for the benefit. But in 1993, Congress grandfathered them all in. As long as they serve six years of reserve duty, weekends a month, two weeks a year for six years, then they're indeed eligible for the VA benefit, right? Also, if a veteran, if a reservist or National Guard gets called up to active duty for 90 days, so there's some young men and women today who haven't even been in six years, but they've been to Afghanistan or Iraq, and they've served 90 days during combat, they're eligible for the benefit. Also, if they served 181 days during peacetime on active duty, they would also be eligible. There's one more category that are, uh, of people who could be eligible for the benefit. An unremarried spouse of a veteran who's died while on active duty or from a service-connected disability. If a veteran dies while on active duty, the spouse gets the same benefit as the veteran would have gotten as long as they do not get remarried up to the age of 57. Don't ask me why VA chose the age 57. I don't know what happens at 57, but something, something great happens at the age of 57, right? No, we don't know. Um, they would also be eligible if the veteran died from a service-connected disability. So, for instance, let's say Agent Orange that now has been proven to cause cancer, diabetes, and all these other crazy illnesses. If a veteran dies from exposure to Agent Orange while on active duty service, and VA says, yes, indeed, this person passed from a service-connected disability, the spouse would get the same benefit as a veteran would have gotten. However, if I, the veteran, die from natural causes and I'm no longer on active duty, my certificate of eligibility dies with me. Okay? And only the spouse is eligible to use the benefit, by the way, not the children. All right. On the board you see the request for certificate of eligibility. It's inside your folder. You could fill it out and mail it away to Decatur, Georgia and pray that you get it back. You may get it back saying you filled it out wrong. You may not even get a response. However, if you come to us, the VA approved lender, we can pull your certificates of eligibility absolutely free and we can get it pretty quickly. Majority of the time, it's immediate. 
Sometimes we have to upload your DD214 or your retirement's points total, and we can get it within four days. Any questions about eligibility? Right on. So now that you're eligible for the benefit, that does not mean you automatically get the money. You have to income and credit qualify in order to get the loan, right? So who can finance 100% on a purchase? Well, a veteran who can income and credit qualify all by themselves. And earlier we talked about VA says there's no, there's no credit score, but I said lenders do have one. The minimum credit score today for a VA loan is 620. 620 is the minimum FICO score. All right. So a veteran who can income and credit qualify all by themselves could buy a home 100% financing. A veteran and their spouse, both incomes, both credits, could buy a home 100% financing. A veteran and another veteran that are both going to occupy the property as their primary residence could buy a home 100% financing. However, a veteran and a non-veteran not married cannot buy a home 100% financing with a VA loan. Okay? And there's some reasons for that. In my opinion, here's one of them. Do you guys know in society today, it's much easier to get out of a marriage than it is to get somebody off of a deed to a property? Right. Let's say you and I decide to buy a house together. And after a year, you say, man, I don't like you no more, Tony. And you want to sell the house? But I say, I'm sorry, I'm still in love with you. I don't want to sell the house. Right? You can't force me to sell my 50% share in that house. No one can. You can sell your 50%, but how easy is it to sell half a house? Not very easy, right? So they don't want the veteran to get in any kind of trouble by getting involved in a, in a purchase of a home without being married or two veterans. Any questions about that? All right. The home must be owner-occupied. So you must occupy this property as your primary residence. But back in the day, veterans thought they had to occupy the property until they paid it off or until they sold it. But it's really one year is all you have to occupy it as your primary residence, and then you can convert it to a rental property. So what I just said is it's possible to build wealth with your VA benefit. And later on today, I'll teach you how. Water catchment systems here in Hawaii are ineligible for the VA loan. Um, our State of Hawaii Department of Health posted on their website that water catchment system are not, is not potable water, therefore it does not meet the minimum property requirements for VA. So you cannot buy a home with a water catchment system, which half the Big Island has it. So Volcano zones one and two are ineligible. You cannot buy a home in Kalapana and use your VA benefit. It might burn up one day. Cesspools and septic tanks are okay as long as three things are met. Number one, an inspection's done and they're in good working order. Two, it has to be typical for the area that you're purchasing in. And three, the, uh, it, cannot adversely it cannot adversely affect the markability of your home. So as long as those three things are met, cesspools and septic tanks are okay. The home must be in good condition. So no terror downers. Uh, the reason why is chances are if you, the veteran, are buying a home with no money down, it's because you don't have a whole lot of capital. And the last thing VA would want you to do is buy something that could potentially be the money pit. You think it's going to cost you 50 grand to fix up. It costs you 200,000, and now you don't, can't afford to fix it and you can't live in it. How long does somebody pay for something they can't live in? Chances are not very long. And nobody wants you to fail at home ownership. Especially in our office, we want a veteran to succeed in home ownership. That's why buying a teardowner is not good. Fixer uppers need to be fixed up prior to closing. The definition of a fixer upper in VA's eyes is anything that is health and safety. So holes in the wall have to get patched up. Broken glass have to get, has to get fixed. Carpeting so bad you wouldn't let a two-year-old walk on it would have to get replaced. Now, this can be done at the seller's expense or at the buyer's expense. Everything involved in a purchase contract of a home is negotiable, right? So, but as your lender, I would encourage you not to fix anybody's house until you get loan approval saying the last thing left is the repair. Because if you go fix somebody's house and your lender tells you you're no longer eligible for the loan, we can't approve you, you just paid to fix somebody else's house. 
So don't do that until we give you uh, loan approval, okay? Questions about conditions. The big one here in Hawaii is permits. There's a lot of homes that are not completely permitted. Now, just as important as it is to select a VA knowledgeable lender, it is just as important to find a VA knowledgeable realtor. Because as your lender, when do you think I would find out if a home is not completely permitted? At, at the appraisal, exactly, at the appraisal. Now, by the time you've done an appraisal, you've paid for a home inspection, which costs between $350 to $500, depending on the size of the home. And then the appraisal costs $525. Does anybody in this room have $1,000 they want to throw away? If you do, just throw it up here. I know what to do with it. But if you don't, then do not get involved in an unpermitted home because that's exactly what will happen. VA will not allow us to close because three things could go wrong with it. It could have structural issues, plumbing issues, or electrical issues, right? Could have one of those three things. Once someone has completed a home without permits, you do not know what's going on inside the walls. And chances are, they, they didn't get it permitted for a reason, right? They didn't go hire the best contractors out there, because if they did, it would have got permitted. They probably used their cousins on the weekend to go build these things. And we've seen some crazy stuff inside the walls once they're open. You know, uh, galvanized steel, the PVC plumbing. That's good, right? Yeah. How about wiring taped together with black electrical tape inside the walls? Pretty good, right? Or how about a structural beam cut into to put an electrical box inside? Yeah, not good, especially when you have termites, right? Once you cut that thing open, now feed me, Seymour. Yeah. All right. All right, so permits need to be complete. Condos and CPRs need to be on the VA approval list. Now, the problem is not a lot of veterans know what a condo or CPR is. So a condominium, is that a high-rise building? It could be, right? One guy owns all the boxes. That's an apartment building. But different people own the different boxes, condominium. How about townhomes? You own upstairs, somebody owns downstairs, or you own upstairs, downstairs, and the one touching you is upstairs, downstairs? That could be. It could be a PUD, a planned unit development. But how about a house standing all by itself? Could that be a condo? It could be because that acronym CPR does not stand for push on someone's chest and blow in their mouth. It stands for condominium property regime. See, in Hawaii, we are running out of land, and developers are getting smarter and smarter. So let's just say this was zone R10, one house per 10,000 square feet. They cut the pie into three equal pieces, 3,333 square feet each. They put a house in all three pies. Looks like a single family house. You walk in it, it'll feel like one and smell like one. But guess what? It is indeed a condo because the land has been condominiumized. And VA is strict on condos, so it needs to be on their approval list. And you have the link for the approval list for the condos on the board. Is there any questions about condominiums? All right. Now, in Hawaii, there's two types of land ownership. One is leasehold, and the other one is fee simple. Now, fee simple is you own the house and the lot. That's king. Land is king here in Hawaii. Leasehold is you own the building, but you don't own the land. It's much like a trailer park on the mainland. The difference is you can take your trailer when you leave the trailer park. You can't take your house off the lot when your lease expires because in Hawaii, a majority of all leases state that any improvements on the, on the property stay with the property when the lease expires. So in my opinion, it is impossible for you to build wealth from generation to generation with leasehold property, right? Fee simple is what you want to do. So VA says if you're going to buy a leasehold property, the lease has to be fixed for the term of the loan, so 30 years, let's just say, and not expire for 14 more years after the lease is over with. So a 44-year lease is what you need. And no renegotiation period for the first 30 years. Not too many of that stuff out there here in Hawaii. N Hawaiian Homes is part of the Native American Act. It is the only loan that VA does direct. And the Native Hawaiian has to be the veteran, not the spouse. Right? And it's the only loan they do direct. 
But I can speak a little bit about Hawaiian homes because my grandfather is 50% Hawaiian. So my grandfather cashed in his uh, stock in his company that he worked for for 35 years. And he built this $700,000 home on Hawaiian homes. My grandfather passed away. My aunties and uncles, they can inherit it. They're 25% Hawaiian, right? But what happens when all my aunties and uncles die and us cousins are all an eighth? What happens to the property? You have to sell it or it goes back to Oha, right? Now, how e easy is it to sell a $700,000 leasehold property? <laughs> not very easy, especially to 50% or more Hawaiians, which there's not too many of them here on the island. Yeah, so leasehold property. It makes sense in some cases. For instance, the five regions in Aiea, I'm sorry, in Salt Lake, the five regions have a lease that's good till 2080. We did have a 50-something-year-old veteran that said, hey, Tony, I want to buy in the five regions because I'm not going to move, and I could care less what happens to the property after I pass away. So for him, it made sense. He got a cheap property that he could stay in for the day he died. For me, though, it doesn't make any sense because I have two daughters that I would love for them to inherit the land that I own, right? And leasehold, you can't do that because eventually the landowner will get their property back. Now on the MLS sheet that you have inside your um, folder, this is how a veteran would determine whether something's leasehold or, or fee simple. On the top corner it tells you FA for, I'm mean, sorry, FS for fee simple, FA for fee available, which means you buying the house and the land together. We can do that one loan at, at the same time. Or LH, leasehold. Also, we talked a little bit about condominiums earlier. How can you tell if something's a condo here in Hawaii? If you see above here, this one says condo, right? Look two lines down from that. You see that, that word TMK? TMK stands for tax map key. In this case, what is the last four digits of the tax map key? 0080. That means it's indeed a condominium. Because if it was a single family home, it would say 0000. Anything other than four zeros is a condo. All right? Any questions about condos or leasehold property? All right. Now, what are the benefits of the VA loan? The number one benefit is there's no down payment required. And it says here the loan limit is 756250 That is true to the end of this year. Come January 1st, the loan limit's changing to 750000 so we're losing $6,250. You can still finance $750,000. That's still a pretty penny, right? Yeah. Um, you can finance 100% with no private mortgage insurance. On conventional loans, if you try to finance more than 80% of the value of the home, you're going to have to buy this insurance policy called mortgage insurance. And by the way, it's very expensive and not very easy to obtain. And what does it do for you? What does, pri what does it private mortgage insurance do for you? Absolutely nothing except helps you get the loan. But the lender, it protects them in case you default. So VA does not have private mortgage insurance. Closing costs. Every loan has closing costs. So even though you're financing 100% of the purchase price of the home, you still have closing costs involved. And closing costs is very easy to explain. It's like this. If this is your rate today, this is what your closing cost is. You want a lower rate, guess what, what happens to the closing cost? Higher, right? You don't want to pay any closing costs, what happens to the interest rate? It goes up higher, right? So it's like a balancing scale. Everybody's situation is different. Does anybody in here think they have the same credit score as your neighbor? No, nobody has the same. Do you guys think you guys all have the same amount of money in the bank? No, right? Yeah. Uh, so everyone's situation is very unique. And we're gonna tailor the loan to match your situation. If you have a lot of money in the bank, chances are you're gonna want the lowest rate you could possibly get. But if you don't have any money in the bank, well, you're gonna want us to pay for all your closing costs. So that's how it can work. VA says it's okay for a veteran to go out and borrow the money for their closing costs from like say their credit union. We count that debt. As long as they can still qualify, they can use that money for closing costs. Gifts are allowed for closing costs, right? And then it says the seller can pay all or part of your closing costs. 
The key word in that sentence is this big word, can. It does not say have to. It says the seller can pay part of your closing cost. And why I emphasize that is because back in 05, 06, 07, these sellers and some realtors were convincing veterans, talking them out of using their VA benefit because they thought the seller had to pay all these crazy closing costs. But you'd be, uh, you'd be surprised to know that ever since I've been in the mortgage industry, 2003, a seller has never been required to pay any of a veteran's closing costs. So all those guys that got turned away from using their VA benefit and put into those 80, 20 wonderful loans, yeah, that they're stuck in today, didn't really have to be in those things. It just as an industry, we did our very worst to educate. So that's why we're out here educating veterans, and that's why I do C classes that educate realtors about the benefit, so that everyone knows that this thing that we say is a loan product, VA loan, is not a product. It is an entitlement that is earned by the veterans to be able to use since they serve their country, right? All right. So it also says, though, that a seller can also pay up to 4% in seller concessions. What does that mean? It says that it is possible that a seller can give up to 4% of a sales price of a home. Let's say half a million dollars, 500,000. 4% of a half a million dollars is $20,000. So let's say you, the veteran, have this BMW that you owe 20 grand on, and your payment's $1,000 a month. Well, if you found a seller willing to give you a 4% seller concession, we could pay off the BMW at closing. You have no longer a $1,000 a month car payment and you qualify for the home to buy. It is the only loan on the planet that allows a seller to pay off a buyer's debt. Yeah, that's how powerful this loan is. The veteran pays a one-time fee to the Veterans Administration called the funding fee. Now, we'll talk about the funding fee in detail and there's many different uh, ways it works. So we'll talk about it in a little bit. There's no prepayment penalty with a VA loan. VA has never had a prepayment penalty, but unfortunately, those guys that got put in those 80-20 loans, it was a three-year prepayment penalty. Even if they saw the trains coming down the track, they couldn't jump off because the penalty was six months of interest. Back then, six months of interest on a half a million dollars at six and a quarter was about 12 thousand dollars plus pay closing costs and all that kind of stuff to refinance where VA does not have a prepayment penalty and if they would have been in their VA loan back then they could have done a streamlined refinance even though the property values have gone down because VA says that if you have a VA loan going back into a VA loan and not pulling out any equity you can do this thing called the interest rate reduction refinance loan the streamlined refinance so no appraisal, no income verification, no asset verification. Roll your closing costs into your new loan and take advantage of the new low rate. VA is a very powerful, powerful loan. The next one says if you're a veteran that does not have a VA loan, but you want to refinance into a VA loan. So let's say you bought a home back in 2007 and they talked you into using a conventional loan and put down 20%, but the values of home have declined since then and you don't have 20% equity. Well, VA says that you can uh, refinance your home up to 100% of the appraised value, but in most cases it's 90%. But even 90%, you would have no mortgage insurance on your VA loan. And the loan limit's the same as the purchase, 756,250 to the end of this year, and 750 to the, uh, starting January 1st. On the neighbor islands, it's 625.5. No, the neighbor islands are staying exactly the same. The next one says that a veteran is allowed to add up to $6,000 for energy efficient upgrades. But I'm a lender that's going to tell you this. You ready? Debt is evil. Can you guys say that for me? Debt is evil. Debt is the most evilest thing on the planet. Yeah, our country's in dire straits because of debt. Marriages get broken up because of debt. Debt is evil. Now. VA says that you could add up to $6,000 for this energy efficient upgrades, but I need to teach you how mortgage interest is calculated. It is compound interest. For those of you who don't know the difference between compound interest and simple interest, compound interest is great when you're receiving it. Terrible when you're paying it. 
So the $6,000 water heater could cost you 18 grand after 30 years. There's other ways to finance a water heater. Right now, you can get a 0% interest uh, energy efficient upgrade, energy efficient loan from banks here locally, zero interest for 18 months. You file your taxes, get that big return, pay down it, and pay it off within 18 months, you paid absolutely no interest. Or if you can't do that, you can finance up to $6,000 for 30 years. But what did I say? Debt is what? Evil. Evil. That's right. Now, I don't know, there's no benefit for me to tell you that because as a lender, I actually make more money than the more money I loan, right? But it's the right thing to say. All right. For those of you who thought $756,250 was not enough for you, there's actually more money available to you with VA. It's called the VA Jumbo Loan. You could go up to 1.5 million. 1.5 million. But you have to put down 25% of the difference. So if you wanted to buy a home for $956,250, there was a $200,000 gap. 25% of that is $50,000. $50,000 of $956,000 represents about 6.5% down payment. Anybody think you can get a conventional jumbo loan with 6.5% down? No, you can't. Can you get an FHA loan with 6.5% down payment jumbo? No. It's the cheapest jumbo loan on the planet. All right. Myths about the VA loan. What have you been told? Number one, I can only use my benefit on my first home. That's absolutely false. And here's how it works. There's three different rules. Rule one, you buy the house, you sell the house, you get your benefit back, right? Rule number two, you buy your house, you keep it long enough where you can refinance it to a conventional loan with no mortgage insurance. On a one-time option, we can get your certificate of eligibility reinstated in full. Later on, you want to buy a home, 100% financing, you can use your VA benefit, and we can count 75% of the rental income to offset your mortgage, right? That's rule number two. Rule number three is, if you bought a home today for $200,000, a condo, let's say, and you lived in it for a year, and the loan limit next year we said was 750, right? And you wanted to buy another home, if you borrow 200 and the loan limit is 750, how much is left over? $550,000, which means you could buy a home, 100% financing up to 550,000. You can actually have more than one VA loan at a time. We have a gentleman that has three VA loans at one time, three different condos he's bought over the years. You just have to occupy the property as your primary residence for at least one year, right? Questions about that? Seller won't accept my offer because he or she doesn't want to pay any points. Well, we talked about that. The seller does not have to pay. But I like to tell stories because I'm Portuguese. <laughs> and uh, it actually makes you guys retain information a little bit better. But back in 2007, I was uh, called by a buyer's realtor that said, hey, I have this client that wants to do this Flex 97 loan. That's a 3% down conventional loan back then. So I asked, is your uh, client a veteran? They said, no. I said, that's too bad. So I get them pre-approved over the internet and over the phone, which is why we like to meet people face-to-face -face nowadays. See, that's the next problem with America today is communication. You know, this texting and stuff, so fun, isn't it? Yeah, there's nothing that beats face-to-face -face, uh, communication. So, but anyway, I got this guy pre-approved for half a million dollars. He goes out and he finds a house, half a million dollars, up in Makakilo. He comes into my office for the very first time I met him. And I looked at him, I go, are you from Hawaii? He goes, no, I'm not from Hawaii. I said, well, what brought you to Hawaii? He said, the government did. I was with the Army for five years. I said, wait a minute, you were in the Army for five years? He goes, yeah. Can I show you what your VA benefit would be? He said, sure. So he's about to put 3% down, right? 3% down on a half a million dollars, $15,000? VA, no money down, saving $300 a month. Are you interested in that, I asked. What do you think he said? <laughs> of course I am. So tell me, why would your realtor say you weren't a veteran? He said, oh, Tony, he didn't want you talking to me about my VA benefit because he said the sellers aren't going to accept my offer because it's a VA loan. So I called his agent, and that's exactly what he said. So do you mind if I call the seller's agent? He goes, no, I don't mind. Call him. So I call the seller's agent, Mr. Seller's agent. The buyer that has an accepted contract with your seller is a veteran. And before I could say anything else, what do you think he said? We're not accepting a VA contract. I said, you know, I heard that. 
but can I just ask you why? He said, sure, because my seller doesn't want to pay any of those crazy closing costs. Is that, a, is that it, I asked? He said, that's it. So I said, well, today's your lucky day. He goes, why is that? I said, because you're about to get a free education. You see, realtors pay money for the CE class, but veterans, it's free. He goes, what do you mean I'm about to get a free education? Did you know your seller doesn't have to pay a single penny in this guy's closing costs? And he's going to pay all of it. You don't have to pay any of it. We'll put it in writing that your seller doesn't have to pay a single penny in his closing costs. All I'm asking is that you allow this gentleman who served five years in the Army, one tour in Iraq, to protect your freedom to tell him he can't use it. Sir, it's going to save the veteran $15,000 and $300 a month. Please allow him to use it. We'll put it in writing. He said, Tony, if you guys put it in writing, we'll let him use his benefit. That day, he saved $15,000 in the bank and $300 a month. It gets better. In 2009, we streamlined it from six and a quarter to 4.75. He saved another $300 a month. And just recently, we streamlined him to 3.5%, saving him another $300 a month. He's $900 to the good and one of my best friends. Don't you think you know why? Yeah. <laughs> it can be. It can be absolutely none. And we'll talk about points and all that kind of stuff later on. Um, so, seller does not have to pay anything, right? I can only buy a house of the 240,000 and still use my benefit. That's false. The loan limit is 756, 250 this year and 750 next year. Yes. What is the limit going to be for all islands? 625,500 for the neighbor islands. Yeah. So the question was, what is the neighbor islands uh, loan limit going to be in 2013? And the answer is 625,500 dollars. My spouse's income cannot be used to help me qualify for the home we want. And some lenders, they say that active duty spouse's income cannot be used for them to qualify. They think they're not, it's not stable, right? That you're going to move in three years. Well, as long as we can prove it's stable and likely to continue, we can use it. So a nurse in Texas comes to Hawaii and gets a job as a nurse. Stable, likely to continue. DOD to DOD transfer, stable, right? Cashier at Walmart to a cashier at Kmart, it's stable. But a nurse to a realtor, no good, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's totally different. Yeah, totally different type of work. So we just have to prove it's stable and likely to continue. I cannot let somebody assume my mortgage because he or she isn't a veteran. And that's absolutely false. The VA loan, that's another major advantage of the VA loan. It is assumable with VA's permission. But here's how it works. If you, the veteran, allow a non-veteran to assume your loan, you risk losing that portion of your entitlement. So if you let a non-veteran assume your loan, you don't get that portion of your entitlement back until they sell it or refinance it. However, you could market the sale of your home to another veteran. And they could swap entitlements, and you get your certificate back. They put theirs up. They get the low rate. Do you know the difference between 3.25% financing on a half a million dollars versus 8% financing? It's about $600,000 on a half a million dollar home. $600,000 in interest more. And folks, we are very spoiled with interest rates right now. It's not a matter of, is it going to go up? It's when is it going to go up? Because in 2001, interest rates were 8%. You guys remember that? That's only 11 years ago. It's going to happen again. And uh, if we're not prepared, we're going to be in some trouble. But veterans have an assumable loan that they could, their house just became more marketable than their neighbor's house. I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't want to assume, like myself. Yeah. I just refinanced my house about six months ago, 3.5. Yes. And now uh, uh, my daughter's separated. I have two daughters. Okay. I said, you know what, I'm 78 years old, I want a mortgage interest. Right. Now, can they assume my VA loan to maybe they go to your phone and try to get a loan with it if they can qualify? Well, actually, they would go. The question was, he has a VA loan at 3.5%. Can his daughters assume the remainder of his mortgage? The answer is yes. They would go through the lender you currently have, and they would have to qualify, and then VA would have to approve it. But yes, it is assumable by them. It is a great way for you to pass down property. Yeah, fantastic. Good question. Thank you. All right. 
I, may, I must pay the funding fee even though I have VA disability. That is absolutely false. Disabled veterans, 10% or more disabled veterans are exempt from the VA funding fee. So on a half a million dollars, the first time they use it, they save $10,750 on a half a million dollars. Second time they use it, they would save $16,500. And all you need is 10% disability. Hearing loss, what did I say? Hearing loss, tendonitis, those are things that could get you 10% disability. So if you're a veteran that's been out of the military for a while now, it is not, um, not over. You can go back and get re-rated by VA, right? That's what you just did? Congratulations. I would order your uh, medical records from a place called archives.gov forward slash veterans. Archives.gov forward slash veterans. At archives.gov forward slash veterans, you can order your DD-214, your discharge paper, your medical records, and your service records, all for free. Once you get your medical records, I would say go see your current physician, your civilian sub physician, ask him to take a look at your medical records and see if there's anything in there that you're suffering from today that could have been caused by your active duty time. And if there is, take that information with you and go get re-rated. Now, don't, you can try to go to VA yourself and do it, but there's organizations that will help walk you through it. Organizations like the American Legion or the Navy League or veterans of foreign wars. All these, all these people have people on staff that will help you walk you through the process because it can be very frustrating and you could just say it's not worth it. But think about it. First time use on a half a million dollars, 10750 Is it worth $10,750 to wait around in the VA office for a little while? It might be. All right? I have a partial down payment. I'm told I must pay the entire funding fee. So if you do not have disability and you put a 5% down payment, the funding fee is less. 10% down is even less. We'll talk about the funding fee on the next slide. I don't have two years of full service. So I'm not eligible. That's not true. Early outers, medically discharged people could be eligible and not serve two years, right? Funding fee. What is this thing called the funding fee? Well, the funding fee guarantees your loan 25% in case you default. In that way and that way only, it works like mortgage insurance. But it does not calculate like mortgage insurance. And I'll show you what I mean in a few slides. So, regular military. Regular military is anyone who served enough active duty time. So reservists that get called up to active duty would be regular military. No money down, first time to use it is 2.15%. Subsequent use, 3.3%. Now people always go, wow, Tony, why is it so much higher the second time around? Well, because VA believes that if you would have kept your home long enough and sold it, and you put 5% down on your second home, 5% down first time, one and a half. Second time, one and a half. Now if you do have 5% to put down on the second time use, we would encourage you to do so because you would save 1.8% in a funding fee. 5% down on a half a million dollars is $25,000. 1.8% on a half a million dollars is almost $10,000. If your credit union called you today and told you, open up a CD with us for $25,000 and we'll give you $10,000 in interest today, how many of you would do that? You would find a way to find 25 grand, right? So yeah. So first time use, 2.15 and 3.3. 5% down, one and a half, one and a half, 10%, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. Reservists and National Guard is a little bit higher, 2.4, 1.75, and one and a half, okay? Now here's an example of the funding fee versus private mortgage insurance. We're gonna, someone's gonna buy a home today with a half a million, for a half a million dollars. This FICO score is 720. If their credit score was lower than that, this whole scenario would be way, way worse. So conventional loan, 5% down, they're going to finance $475,000. Their principal and interest payments, $25,49.90. Private mortgage insurance every single month is $518 a month. Can somebody tell me how long does private mortgage insurance stay on a conventional loan? 22% equity. 22% equity. Once the loan naturally amortizes down to 78% is when it disappears automatically. 
Otherwise, they say you could petition the lender to remove it if you think you have 22% equity. However, this is how the conversation goes. Mr. Lender, I want you to remove my private mortgage insurance because I have 22% equity. Well, that's great, Mr. Customer. We need to verify that by ordering an appraisal. We're going to order it, and you're going to pay for it. Appraiser goes out. You get the appraisal report back, you have 30% equity. Mr. Lender, I have 30% equity. I want you to remove the private mortgage insurance. Yeah, but we don't have to by law to remove it. You could refinance though, and it could come off. Yeah, it's not very easy to get off. So let's just say it naturally amortizes. You know how long it takes to naturally amortize on a conventional loan? About 12 years. Let's do the math real quick. 12 months times $500 is $6,000 times 12 years, $72,000. Isn't that wonderful? Total payments, $3,067.90, and they've been separated from $25,000 of their hard-earned money. Now we have a veteran with no disability and no down payment. They're going to finance $510,750. This $10,750 represents the VA funding fee of 2.15% for the first time use. Principal and interest, $274182. No private mortgage insurance. The difference between this and this, $326.08. And what does our veteran still have in the bank if they had it? $25,000. So which one do you want to do? Yeah, that one, right? All right. So cash out refinance. Is a VA loan the VA loan taking out equity or a conventional rural housing FHA loan into a VA loan? First time use 2.15%, subsequent use 3.3, reserve is 2.4 and 3.3. How much is it though if you have a 10% more disability? Zero. zero on a purchase, zero on a refinance. Zero on a streamline, zero on an assumption. On a streamline refinance, if you do not have disability, it's a half a percent funding fee. And on a loan assumption, it's a half percent funding fee. Right. All right, you just learned about the VA home loan benefit. Now we're going to talk about this thing called BAH. Is there anybody here that's on active duty? Well, there isn't anyone in the room that's on active duty, but let's talk about BAH because you guys know some people who are on active duty, right? Yeah. And if you're not on active duty, let's pretend it's rent. Some of you guys are paying rent, right? So let's pretend someone's going to join the military today married with a kid. Does that ever happen? Yeah, all the time. And they're going to be guaranteed E2 out of boot camp. Does that ever happen? Certainly it happens all the time. And we're going to use the BAH uh, table for 2011 for all 25 years of this person's enlistment. So BAH, just how valuable is it? Our first duty station for our young E2 is in San Diego, California. Now in San Diego, California, they get $1,941 a month tax-free for housing. Now wait a minute, let me just explain to you again. The government gives them tax-free money that they could go out and buy a home right off the interest against their taxable income. Ooh. For those of you who are not on active duty today, you can go down on Kapilani Boulevard and sign up with the recruiters. They're open right now. So E2, one year as an E2 of BAH is $23,292. For two years as an E2, that's $46,584. E2s, E3s, E4 stations, same place, same amount of money. Basic allowance for housing. Yeah, basic allowance. BAH, the question was, what does BAH stand for? It's basic allowance for housing. So this, guy, this person who just joined the military, first four years of active duty is $93,000 tax-free for housing. In Honolulu, it's $2,016 for E4. Four years as an E4, $96,768. E5 in Millington, Tennessee, $63,792. E6 back in Honolulu, $114,480. An E7 in Yuma, Arizona, $62,928. And an E8 last five years in Honolulu is $167,580 
tax-free for housing for a grand total of $598,716. For those of us in the 25% tax bracket, that equates to $748,000 taxable dollars for you to earn. What are you going to do with your BAH? Now, when I introduced myself, I said, I'm Tony Diaz from where? God's country. God's country. Why not? That's right. My father joined the Marine Corps when I was two years old. That meant he was married with a? Child. Kid. He served 25 years in the United States Marine Corps. He retired in E8. My father now lives in Las Vegas, Nevada in a budget motel weekly. He has his retirement and disability to show for his 25 years of service. He does not own any real estate. It's a shame that someone who defended their country for 25 years does not own any property. <laughs> so, just because it wasn't for him does not mean it isn't for you. Reason number two I do what I do is I never want another veteran to go, I wish I would have known that. See, all these young men and women, they, they, they live in base housing because it's very convenient. The government makes it very convenient. And I used to hear the terminology, I live in free base housing. Really? How free is it? Because they take away this BAH, right? So it's not free. It's $598,000 expensive. So what are you going to do with it? So I'd like to do this scenario with you guys. Could you pretend that you have $598,000 in cash sitting in front of you? Now, I give it to you. How many of you would give it back to me and live in my house every single month? Wow, and there's nobody here that would give me back my money and live in my house. So who lives in base housing then? There's cars parked there. Somebody lives there. Right, so these guys, the government gives them that money and they say, thank you, Mr. Government, but I want to pay off your mortgage. Right? It's really, they just don't know. How about, would you pay off her mortgage with that money I, that I just gave you guys? Well, when you live out in town, you write that rent check, you'll never get that money back ever again in your life. And you just help her pay off her mortgage. Chances are, if you had $598,000 in cash sitting in front of you, you would invest it in your own home. But the question is, why don't most active duty buy when they're here in Hawaii? Or why don't most people in general buy when they're in Hawaii? Too expensive. And they're not going to be here long enough. That, you know what? Seven years of doing this, these classes, that's always the answers. It costs too much for houses in Hawaii, and I'm only going to be here two years. Well, it's really this, false evidence appearing real. They're afraid to make a bad decision. And I can tell you this, I was them. In 2000, I owned no property. Who was my example? My dad, my dad right? So luckily, I got married, and my wife, my wife made me read this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Anybody read that book? Yeah. It's written by Robert Kiyosaki, who's a prior service Marine, and he's local from Hawaii. That book helped change my life. I realized I didn't have to be rich to buy houses. I had to be smart. So we started buying homes in 2001. We stopped buying homes in 2005. Today I own my house in Mililani, two condos on the west side of the island, two threeplexes and two duplexes in Indiana. What changed in my life? Do you think I was making more money in my job than I already was before I started buying homes? No. I just realized I had to be smart about it. So they're afraid to make a bad decision. But there's really only two things somebody who's not going to live anywhere for a long period of time needs to think about, especially here in Hawaii. So rule number one, can I buy it and sell it and get my money back within the time I'm going to be here? And make a profit. And make a profit or break even even, right? So I'm going to tell you this. I'll look every single one of you in the eye and tell you, if you think you're going to buy a house for 102% financing and after three years sell it, pay a 6% commission, and make your money back, it's the riskiest thing you're ever going to do in your life. Short-term ownership of real estate is risky. However, there's rule number two. Can I buy it? How much is my monthly payment? And if I rented it out, how much could I get in rent? And can I afford to pay the difference? If the answer is yes, then buying a home in Hawaii makes sense. If the answer is no, then it doesn't make sense. But now you base your opinion on fact and not on fear, and you will never say, man, I wish I would have known that. But a wahoo is a very unique animal. There's only one other place in the United States I know of that has seven military bases within 50 miles of each other. It's San Diego. 
Anybody else know of another place? No, right? We have a constant influx of people coming and going, buying and selling, stimulating our economy. The state of Hawaii tells us that tourism drives our economy. I believe that for the whole state. I don't believe it for Oahu. Yeah, it's the military that drives our economy. You think we got H1, H2, H3 because of tourism? No. It's to connect the military bases. Right. See, one of two things are going to happen in my young daughter's lifetime here in the island of Oahu. We're either going to run out of land or we're going to run out of natural resources to be able to support the amount of people we have in the island. If we run out of land, what do you think happens to the price of homes? If we run out of natural resources to support the amount of people and we have and the government says, okay, no more building new stuff unless you tear down something old, what happens to the prices of houses? It goes way back up still. It's already happened in a small little town in Northern California. You might have heard of it. It's called San Francisco. The VA loan limit in San Francisco is $1 million. Yeah, you can buy a Cracker Jack box for half a million. It's not, is it going to happen on Oahu? It's when is it going to happen on Oahu? You see, inside your guys' packet, you have this annual residential resale data for Oahu. Because the first thing you guys said is the prices of houses in Hawaii are too high. Well, you know what else is high? Rent. Rent is high too. So you can either pay rent or you can pay your mortgage. But can somebody tell me what the number one expense for all Americans is? Housing, right? Housing. Why do you think there's so many homeless people? Because housing is very expensive. If you never pay off your home, when are you going to retire? I know, all you guys want to have to work the day you die, right? You guys want to have to work? No, you want to retire one day, I hope. At least I know I do. I don't want to have to work. And a lot of active duty people think when they retire at age 45, I'm retired. No, you're not. You got to go find a second job. Unless you bought a home that's going to become a means to your end. And a Wahoo can certainly become a means to your end. See, I didn't buy on a wa on, in uh, Indiana for appreciation. I bought in Indiana for cash flow. My mortgage is lower than the rent that I collect. But on Oahu, it's all about appreciation. So let's take a look up here. Can somebody look at, on 1994, down on the bottom, median sales price of a single family home in 1994, how much was it? 360,000. Now look above that, was it ever any higher? No, so it's fair to say that if we're sitting in this room and it's 1994, the prices of houses in Hawaii are what? Too expensive. Too high. They had to be. It's at its all-time high. But if you didn't listen to the naysayers and you bought that at home and you could make your mortgage payment to 2007, how much was it? 643. Ladies and gentlemen, would that have been worth it? So. We don't learn from history as a society. We like to bump our heads in the same walls our parents did. Because in 2004, those people that jumped on the bandwagon thinking they're going to buy a house, sell a house, and flip it and make all kinds of money, what, what started happening in 1995? Down, 96, down, 97 down, 98 down, 99 down. By the way, that was the biggest drop in Oahu's history from 94 to 99, 20%. That's nothing. Anyone know what happened to Vegas? 70% down. How about Florida? 50% down. All those places have tourism. Yeah, we have military to help us with our tourism. Right. So, Oahu is also very stable. So those people who thought they're going to buy the house, sell the house, and flip it, they couldn't make their mortgage payment. Guess what happened? Foreclosures. Sound familiar? 2007, the exact same thing happened. People jumped on the bandwagon thinking they're going to buy a house, sell a house, flip it, make all kinds of money, and now we have short sales and foreclosures. Right, we need to learn from history. I'm only going to be here three years. Well, that's a simple question. How long are you going to be at the next place, and the next place, and the next place? When are you going to buy? When you retire? If you can't buy a house with tax-free money, I'm here to tell you, paying a mortgage with taxable money is very painful compared to paying it with tax-free money. So when are you going to buy? 
If my dad would have bought a 1985, the median sales price here in Honolulu was $158,600. The year my dad retired in 1994, it was worth $360,000. He could have sold his house, moved to Vegas, bought five houses cash, living a whole different life. But he probably would have stayed in Hawaii, and in 2007, his house would have been worth $643,500. Today, 2012, dad would have three years left on his mortgage. He'd be 65 years old when his mortgage was paid off. Just in time for what else? Social Security. Social Security. So, military retirement, VA disability, and Social Security with no mortgage, different life, right? Yeah, but it's not for him. I'll tell you a story. In 2003, I helped a Navy guy buy a home in Eva Beach. He paid $300,000 for this house. In 2005, he got orders to San Diego, California. He could have sold his home for $400,000. A lot of you would have cashed in and ran, right? But he came and asked me to lunch and asked my opinion, what should he do? I said, well, $100,000 is a lot of money. But do you ever plan on coming back to Oahu? He said, well, I do. I plan on coming back in 2008. I said, well, if you had to rent it out, how much could you rent it out for? He said $1,800. Well, his mortgage was $2,000. So what's that? $200 out of his pocket, right? Plus, he hires a property manager because he's a smart guy, pays 10% of $1,800, so that's another $180 out of his pocket. So $380 out of his pocket every single month. How many think that's a great deal? Not too many people raised their hand. So let me continue with my story. So let's round up $380 to $400 a month. Times 12 months, that's $4,800. Let's round it up to $5,000 a month. So for three years that he's gone, he pays $15,000 into this home in Hawaii. When he moves back in 2008, his house is now worth $600,000. If he would have sold his house back then, kept that hundred grand and bought his own house back, he would owe $500,000. But today, that day, he only owed $250,000. That $15,000 was like an investment for him. Now, he lived in that house to 2011 when he retired and sold it and made over $300,000 in profit. And how much do you think he paid in taxes when he sold his house and made over $300,000 in profit? Zero. He was a married man. Two out of the last five years, if you live in that house, two out of the last five years, current tax code says you are exempt from capital gains. He cashed out, moved back to North Carolina where he's from, and paid cash for the home he lives in today. 45 years old, no mortgage, retirement, and VA disability. Do you think he's living the life? He certainly is. That's what I mean. A wahoo can become a means to someone's end. The problem, though, is we as society, again, we don't learn from history. We don't. Because let's tell a different scenario. I had an E7 call me up and said he bought a house from a developer in Ocean Point. He bought that house for $790,000 when the loan limit was $791,000. His mortgage was $4,500 a month. He says, Tony, I can only rent it out for $3,000. Will VA pay the difference in my mortgage versus my rent? I said, no, sir, but can I ask you a question? He said, sure. I said, man, did you not know how much your mortgage payment was when you bought that home? He said, I did. Well, did you not know you might leave in three years? I did. So tell me, what was your plan? Well, I plan on selling it and making money like my friends did. So I do know this about the military. When you go into combat, there's an advanced strategy and there's an exit strategy should something go wrong. You can't sell your home, so what's your exit strategy? I don't have one. So now you're about to face a financial hardship like you've never experienced in your life. You're gonna pay $1,500 plus pay $300 to a property man, $1,800 a month for the next, I don't know how many years till the market changes. Or you're going to do a short sale, which is still not good, or foreclose. Either way, you're not in a good position. Now, chances are that gentleman bought that house because in, on active duty, I'm going to tell you something. I never made the amount of money that I made until I got into the military. Now, I was 18 years old. I didn't make that much money. I was a janitor at a cafeteria on base. 
But when I got in the military, they started paying me all this money. I'm like, wow, isn't it wonderful? I got all this cash. So I bought the very first Acura Integra that ever hit the island of Oahu. $13,000 back then in 1986. Yeah. I wanted to show people how much money I didn't have. I wanted to be flashy, right? So that's a lot of times we think about we need to have these flashy things. But if we just thought about if I can just buy something that's going to fit my needs, because you're not going to retire. If you're not going to retire in it, you never, don't ever buy your dream home. Just buy something that's going to fit your family's needs. So Oahu can become a means to their end. See, in Oahu, this appreciation thing is just amazing. It can be, make you meet where you wanted to be, which is not own your home outright, if you did it right, right? So, local people tell me all the time, hey Tony, the price of houses in Hawaii, they can't keep going up. Us local people aren't gonna be able to afford to live here. Well, I got news for everybody. Economics does not care about demographics, right? So let's pretend we're in the tallest building we're ever gonna be in our lives. And let's just say the lobby represents 1964. That's the year my mother-in-law then bought their home. $25,000. Does anybody think our elevator is going back down in 1964? No. So currently, right now, some of you are financially fit to buy in this market or physically fit enough to run up the stairs and catch up with the elevator, right? Others are got to find a different building. Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Oregon. Lots of transplants not living in Hawaii anymore because they couldn't buy a home. So. The magic question is, when should I buy a home? And the answer to that is very simple. When you can and when it makes sense. Because if you qualify to buy a half a million dollar home today at 3.25% financing, and rates go to four and a quarter, do you qualify for the same 500,000? No, it goes lower. And God forbid the market goes up too. So now you qualify for less, the houses go up in price. It's a double whammy. So the question is, when are you going to buy? We have to learn from history. Because history does repeat itself. Look at the paper again. 1985, the median sales price we said was $158,600, right? Add 11 years to that. 1996, how much was it? 335, double, right? Add 11 more years. 2007, almost what? Double again. What do we think 2018 is going to say? I, I know. Impossible, right? A million dollars? No way is it going to happen. I'm going to tell you this. If you would have told me in 2002, I bought my home in Mililani, a five-bedroom, three-bath house overlooking Schofield Barracks to Westlock with nothing in my way. If you would have told me this $350,000 home would be worth over $800,000 one day, I would have laughed at you. I would have said, man, I'm in the middle of a pineapple field, man. This ain't Hawaii Kai where Scott's from, right? <laughs> this, uh, pineapple, there's lots of rodents and stuff. Right? No. no, but guess what? My house just got appraised last year for $850,000. It's insane. Oahu can become a means to somebody's end. So. What is 2018 going to say? The economists say by 2015, the median sales price of a single family home here in Hawaii will be 800,000. Three years from that, very well could be $1 million. So if you, the veteran, could buy something and hold on to it to 2018, chances are you'll do okay. But you have to be able to make your mortgage payment. You have to be able to ride out the wave. Do not buy something that's more than what you can afford when you leave if you have to rent it out. All right, so now let's talk about the major advantages of real estate versus stock. If you wanted to buy a half a million dollars with a Kmart stock today, could you go to your banker and say, hey banker, I want to borrow a half a million dollars for some stock? No, no man, they might, want to, they might call the paddy wagon on you to check and see if they can check you into the cuckoo farm. Yeah, they're not going to loan you any money for stock. But if you wanted to buy a half a million dollars with your VA home loan benefit today, how much money would you have to put down? Why is it that you put down nothing on real estate but all of it on stocks? Because it's called real estate for a reason. It's for real. 
All you guys found this place? Do you know who else can find it? The bank. The bank knows exactly where this property is. So it's the, called the power of leverage. You're allowed to buy something that could appreciate in value with little or no money out of your pocket, right? So that's advantage number one is leverage. Advantage number two is the tax breaks. If you did make money with your Kmart stock, you have to pay 15% capital gains if you kept it longer than a year. But if you bought your home and lived in it two out of the last five years, and as a married couple made a half a million dollars, how much taxes would you have to pay? Zero. As a single person, it's $250,000. Also, you get to write off the mortgage interest that you pay against your, uh, mor that you write on, your the mortgage interest that you pay on, on your loan, you get to write it off against your taxable income. People hear that, but they don't understand really how it works. So let's take a look at this. An E5 over four, their base pay is 2247.30. Their non-taxable money, BAS, that's for food, BAH for housing, and the cost of living on Oahu, $3,025.46. Yeah, they make more money in non-taxable income. Again, the recruiter is on Kapiolani Boulevard just waiting for one of you guys after this class. Um, the taxable yearly income is $26,967.76. They go out and buy themselves a home, and they pay $1,800 a month in interest. That's $21,600 per year. You subtract the two. How much taxes does somebody pay on if they only make $5,367.76 taxable per year? Absolutely nothing. This person just became tax exempt in a wonderful United States of America. Now, why is it that the government allows us to write off the interest we pay on mortgage against our taxable income? They want to encourage American home ownership. Do you guys know that China is buying us out? Yeah, we, have, we are part of the nation's or the world's best military force. We will not lose a war. We won't lose our country while at war, but we could lose our country by being bought out. So reason number three I do what I do is if I help enough veterans buy homes in America that refuse to sell it to foreign investors, guess what we've done? Exactly what we rose our hand to do, protect this country against all foreign and domestic. More importantly, you the veteran, if you don't own any property, why did you defend something you don't own a piece of? Shouldn't you? Yeah, it's very rewarding to be a VA lender, especially the best VA lender. We really do enjoy getting veterans into their American dream, which is home ownership. And it's very rewarding, especially for someone that's sacrificed all that time and energy in the military. So, advantage number three is the worst year ever in the stock market versus the worst year ever in the real estate market. So, in 1983, I was a junior about to become a senior at Kofa High School in Yuma, Arizona. Remember I told you my dad was stationed in Yuma? Yeah. I was a custodian mopping floors and cleaning toilets. Wonderful job for a 17-year-old. If you have a 17-year-old, I encourage you to give them that job. It's very humbling. But anyway, I wanted to join DECA, Distributive Education Clubs of America. It's for future business people. The teacher told me, hey, Tony, we won't let you join a club if you're doing that job. We have you a job interview at Kmart. So go get the job, take the job interview. If you get the job, you can join the club. So I got the job. And I learned to love Kmart back then. Loved it so much. You guys ready? Attention Kmart shoppers, back in our family shoe department, we're having a blue light special on our ready marked down shoes. Come on back, take a look and save, and as always, thank you for shopping at our Yuma Kmart. Come on, man. Let's see. It's almost 30 years. It's embedded in my brain. Um, so, I started buying stock in Kmart, because they said if you buy a dollar worth of stock, they match a dollar worth of stock, and I kept buying stock in Kmart till 2003, when I owned 13,000 shares of Kmart stock. I said owned because that means past tense. You see, Kmart went into bankruptcy. The bankruptcy judge did a disservice and allowed Kmart to erase all shareholders. Tony lost 13,000 shares of Kmart stock. Now, the minute they came out of bankruptcy, 
Does anyone have a calculator? Oh, there you go. The minute they came out of bankruptcy, that 13,000 shares of Kmart stock would have been worth $17 a share. Can you read that for me? $221,000. Ouch! I'm young, though. I can make that money back, right? It gets worse, though. You see, the bankruptcy judge didn't take into consideration all the assets that Kmart had. Kmart closed a bunch of stores in the mainland, raised up so much capital in 2005, Kmart bought out Sears. That's right, Kmart owns Sears, not Sears owns Kmart. How does somebody go from being broke, busted, and disgusted in 2003 to being so wealthy you can buy at the number one retail store in America? Number one, it was real estate. Number two, it was a bad bankruptcy judge. Yeah, the minute they bought out Sears, stock went to $133 a share times 17 or 13,000. It's $1.72 million. Yeah. I don't shop at Kmart or Sears anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the worst year ever for Tony is he lost 13,000 shares of Kmart stock. And I joked, I was young, right? You guys all heard of this company called Enron? It's this great company in the great state of Texas that was uh, faking their books. And they were doing so wonderfully well in the market that these stockbrokers convinced elderly folks to move their whole retirement portfolio to Enron. And the minute it imploded, these folks lost their whole livelihood. We're talking about self-sufficient US citizens that are now just living off of Social Security. Yeah, the worst year ever in the stock market for them is they lost their livelihoods. Worst year ever for me, 13,000 shares of Kmart stock. But let's talk about real estate. What happens if you bought a house today for half a million dollars and two years from now, it's worth 400,000? What's happened? Some people say you lose $100,000, but have you sold it yet? And if you make your payments on time, is somebody gonna take it from you? So the key is you have to ride out the wave. So buying a home is much like learning how to surf. If you've never surfed before in your life, you do not go to Waimea Bay today and jump in and go for it because those 25-foot waves are going to kill you. The same thing with real estate. Those two E7s buying that house for $790,000 had no business in that water, right? Just needed to buy something that could fit your needs, that you could make those mortgage payments or pay the difference in the rent until you could sell it, right? So the worst year ever in real estate is you got to be able to ride out the wave. If you prepare yourself and follow those two rules, can I buy it and sell it and make my money back in the time I want to be here? Or can I, how much is my mortgage payment? How much can I rent it for? And can I afford to pay the difference? You should do all right, right? All right, you learned about the benefit, you learned about the market. Now let's learn about how to do this loan successfully. So step number one, you need to select a loan officer you like and trust who has a tremendous amount of knowledge about this VA home loan benefit. Anyone know where you can find somebody like that? Hi there. Yeah, Veterans United Home Loans of Hawaii. Uh, yes, we are the best at our job, and here's my, here's my plug for our company. We are a direct lender. Does anyone know the difference between a direct lender and a mortgage broker? Lenders have money, brokers don't. Brokers find money. A mortgage broker will process your loan and then have to send the loan to the underwriter of the lender. As a lender, we will do your pre-approval, process your loan, underwrite your loan, fund your loan, all in-house. Which one could go wrong more often? The broker. the broker, right. Also, we don't say we're the best at everything. You want to do a conventional loan or an FHA loan? You might want to find somebody else. However, we are the best at VA. I have a staff of 30 people waiting to help you to purchase your home. All you need to do is ask. All right. Next is you need to get pre-approved. Now there's a big difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification. A pre-qualification is someone's told you you qualify for a certain dollar amount and you have not shown them all these documents. Basically, it's worthless. A pre-approval is what we do at our office. We will verify to make sure, number one, you're eligible for the benefit. 
Number two, we're going to do your W, make sure we look at your W-2s. You have to be working for two years, right? So two years of W-2s, pay stubs for one month, bank statements for two months, checking savings, IRA, CDs. Now, we, we collect this information, not because you're going to have to use it as down payment or anything, but to help make your loan look stronger. The one that trips up people the most is tax returns. Two years of federal tax returns. Is anybody here self-employed? If you're self-employed, you tell the government you make no money, how much do you qualify for? No money. If you're not self-employed, the other thing we look at on your tax returns is, do you have any unreimbursed business expenses? So for instance, police officers, they have uniforms, union dues, all these unreimbursed business expenses. That counts as debt because it comes directly out of your paycheck. Child care counts as debt. So if your lender never sees these bank or these tax returns until you go into processing and they pull your tax transcripts and find out you have $12,000 worth of unreimbursed business expenses and child care, your income just dropped by $1,000 a month and you may not qualify no more. And after spending four months looking for the perfect home and finding it, wouldn't it be painful to find out you don't qualify no more? So, where do you go to get your loan? Yeah. All right, if you did file bankruptcy, chapter seven is the one you liquidate everything. You must wait two years, to then you can get a VA loan. Conventional loans is seven years, but VA is two. Short sales is two years, foreclosures is two years. Chapter 13, the one you pay back every month, immediately after discharge, you can get a VA loan, okay? If you're paying child support, we need a divorce decree or court order. If you're receiving child support, we need to make sure you've been collecting it for 12 months. Because just because you're entitled to child support does not mean you're getting it, right? There's a lot of donors out there, but not a lot of fathers. You guys got that? Okay. Yeah, there's some that's supposed to pay that don't pay. Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to take all this information, we're going to put it into our computer system. We're going to pull credit from Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. We throw out the high, throw out the low, we use the middle. Your middle score has to be 620 or higher. We're going to run the VA loan analysis to make sure you budget. Then we're going to run the in house approval system called DU for Fannie Mae or LP for Freddie Mac. We get an approve eligible or an accept. You have been pre-approved. And really the only thing that could go wrong with you is if you quit your job, stop paying your bills, go buy a car, get divorced. Don't do any of that stuff when you're looking to buy a house. Just leave everything the same. If nothing changes in your life, chances are you're pre-approved for a while, right? Now the only thing that could really go wrong is this, the house. So that's why it's just as important as it is to find a VA knowledgeable lender, it's just as important to find a VA knowledgeable realtor because they're the ones that's gonna know how to keep you out of the pitfalls of looking at homes, getting involved in the unpermitted homes, getting involved in the condos that are not approved. You don't wanna get involved in those type of things and the VA knowledgeable realtor will know what the pitfalls are. Also, their job is to narrow down the search Right? Because if you're a pre-approved for half a million dollars, sir, do you want to go out and look at every single house out there for half a million dollars or less? No, right? Yeah. If you want a three bedroom, two bath house, you don't want to go look at a two bedroom, one bath for half a million, right? No. Of course not. So their job is to narrow down your search and show you what fits your needs. Then they're going to help write up the purchase contract. It's a 12 page contract here in Hawaii and a bunch of addendums and they're going to explain all that paperwork to you. Now once it's filled out, a VA knowledgeable realtor will not just fax or email that document to the seller's agent. Why won't they do that? Face-to-face -face. Face -face could be better, but quite honestly, if they just sent it over, is it possible that the realtor on the other end might be one of those realtors that don't know about VA and convince their client not to accept a VA contract because blah, blah, blah? Your realtor's job is to help educate the other side of the fence, right? To tell them, we have this qualified veteran 
Do you understand how this VA loan is going to work? Or do you have any apprehension behind a VA loan? Is there anything I could answer for you? Right? It's better to prepare them then than not even know that when they did their listing, uh, when they did their listing agreement interview, they said, there's some loans out there that you're going to be looking at. One is going to be a conventional loan. We're going to accept those. FHA loans, they're OK. But VA, my god, there's all these closing costs that you're going to have to pay. You don't want to get involved with VA. It takes too long, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't take any longer to do a VA loan than it does a conventional loan. In fact, in my opinion, it's much easier for me to do a VA loan than it is to do a conventional loan with less than 20% down. Yeah, much easier. Getting mortgage insurance is painful. All right, so now your realtor has talked to the seller's agent and they're happy look, waiting for the offer. The offer gets over to them. They have, the seller has three rights. Accept it, reject it, or counter it. S accept it, we move forward. Reject it, you gotta go find another house. Counter it, you have those same three rights. Accept, reject, counter. You play ping pong back and forth until you get an accepted contract. Now that you have an accepted contract, you're gonna write an earnest money deposit check. It's normally for $1,000. You never write that check to your realtor or to your lender. If you write a check to Tony Diaz, whose money is it? All day and twice on Sundays is my money, right? But I won't ask you for any money. In fact, as your lender, we don't charge anything up front, not even the appraisal. Can anybody tell me why a lender would charge you their appraisal fee up front? In case that... The deal falls apart? Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. If the deal falls apart, aren't you going to pay your bill? If you ask me, I would. Well, yeah. I mean, but if I'm going to loan you half a million dollars, don't you think I should trust you to pay your bills? Well, you would yeah. think, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, in, in 10 years of doing business, I've been stuck with one appraisal bill. And I've never charged for an appraisal up front. We trust our clients to pay their bills. Quite frankly, if I can't trust you to pay it, I really shouldn't be giving you a loan. Right? So you're going to write the earnest money deposit check to the escrow company. It is your money until the contract gets resolved, either way. Now, if the contract goes through all the way to closing, perfect. That $1,000 can get toward, go towards your closing costs. Or if your closing costs are being paid by the seller or the lender, you can get up to that amount of money back at closing. Okay? So now you got an accepted offer, you're gonna come back to your lender. Veterans United is gonna do your VA loan application because now we have the property. And then you're gonna be asked, do you wanna lock your loan or float your loan? Please, ladies and gentlemen, do not ask me what's gonna to happen to interest rates next week. I have no clue. I can speculate, but that doesn't mean it's actually gonna happen. Something crazy could happen in the world and interest rates jump to 6%. You know, back in like, oh, seven and eight, interest rates were like five point something percent at one point, and then they jumped to six and a quarter, like overnight. That's when you got it the first time. Yeah. So here's the here's the rule of thumb: if you're happy with your rate and payment, lock it in. And if you can't remember that, here's the jingle: if you're happy with your rate, lock it in. If you're happy with your rate, lock it in. If you're not, float. But then if rates go up, if floating is like going to Las Vegas. Rates go up, you lose. Rates go down, you win. But if rates go too far up and you don't qualify no more, guess what? Everybody loses, right? So if you're happy with your rate, lock it in. Okay. Now that we got your loan application, we're going to turn your file over to the processor who's going to verify that everything input in the system is correct. We do that within the first three business days of receiving your loan application completely. So wouldn't it be easier for you to find out there's something wrong up front or wait, wait, wait? Yeah, it's easier to find out up front. While this is happening, by the way, folks, there's a, there's a paragraph in the purchase contract called J1. J1 is your home inspection. In my opinion, you should be doing your home inspection within the first four business days. Why do you want to do it within the first four business days? Is because it, once the VA appraisers assign, when our processor uploads that file to VA, if they go out before you do your home inspection, and then you do your home inspection and you wish to cancel, you just bought an appraisal what? That you're not going to use. I don't want to charge you for an appraisal you're not going to use. 
So it's best that you go out and do your inspection. If you don't like the house, you call us and say, hey, Tony, we don't like the house no more. We want to cancel. They say, okay. Call the appraiser, cancel them. They don't go out. How much money do you owe us now? Absolutely nothing. So do your home inspection early and up front. We get full, VA is a full appraisal, 100% full appraisal, yeah. Okay, so now we have the appraiser assigned. The appraiser's job is to go out and determine value, health and safety, and permit issues, right? Once the appraiser uploads the um, file the back to VA, VA will send it to us, and we'll get the notice of value. The notice of value is after the appraisal review. That is the value we use for the valuation of the property. Now, if the appraisal comes in low, you could renegotiate with the seller. And if the seller says yes, they reduce the price, perfect. If they say no, you could pay the difference if you wanted to. VA is okay with that. But you have to pay the difference in cash. And if you cannot come up with to an agreement, you could cancel. But now you'd have to pay for the appraisal fee. But then you didn't buy a house that wasn't worth it. Right, guys? All right, now once everything else on the condition list is met, the underwriter is going to give us final loan approval and we're going to order your closing documents. If we sign your loan on Monday, we will fund your loan on Tuesday without their original documents. We'll take a facsimile or an email copy from escrow to our corporate office in, in uh, Missouri, right? So we will fund. We sign on Monday, fun on Tuesday. Record here in Hawaii two days later, which is Thursday. This whole process takes about 45 days. It shouldn't take any longer as long as we are allowed to get the appraisal back in a timely fashion. And if you do your home inspection early, we'll be able to do that. Does anyone have any questions about anything we covered today? Seriously, no questions? Really, yes. How does the VA view a uh, property you already own? If I'm using my VA for the second time mm -hmm. and uh, I'm renting out home number one to buy home number two, how would that work? So you use your VA loan the first time. And let's just say you bought that condo for $300,000. Right. So $300,000 of your certificate eligibility is uh, been used up. So now you still have $450,000 and you want to buy your second home. As long as you're going to move out of this home into this home, you can count 75% of the rental income to offset this mortgage immediately, right? And then now you're using second tier of your, it's your second, subsequent use of your VA benefit, so the funding fee is a little higher unless you put 5% down or more. Now, just because you get to the loan limit, so let's just say you bought a home for 300,000, but you find a house for 500,000, right? You're $50,000 over the limit. What did we say? You have to put down 25% of the difference. You don't have to put all $50,000 down. So the VA loan is the best loan for a veteran, especially a disabled veteran. There is no better loan on the planet than a VA loan. No down payment, no mortgage insurance, and no funding fee? Are you kidding me? It's pretty amazing. What other questions you got? If you're a 10% or more disabled veteran, there's no funding fee. No mortgage insurance, right. Yes, right. Can you talk a little more in detail about the costs? Um, I just found this question earlier about points for refinancing with our company. Yeah, um, that's a great question. One, his question was, what, do you have to pay points on loans? Everything in a loan is negotiable, but there's a thing called loan origination. You guys heard of loan origination? Loan origination is normally one point, and a lot of lenders charge loan origination. Veterans United Home Loans of Hawaii, we don't charge loan origination. So you save 1% up front right there. You know, what I don't understand is that lenders, they make money when they sell loans. You guys know that, right? So why do I need to make money up front if I'm going to sell them and make money? Right? It's just how much greed, how much greed do you have to have? So <laughs> charge one, loan, one point of loan origination. So we don't charge loan origination. We also do not charge um, processing fees, underwriting fees, tax service fees. Basically, we don't really charge. The only fee we charge is the appraisal fee. And we, up front, we will charge you for, on a purchase, a uh, $25 credit report and $11 fund, uh, flood certification 
But in reality, when we get to closing, our corporate office actually removes it, and it's a gift. So you only pay the appraisal fee is our only charges, unless you want to buy down the interest rate. Then you have what's called loan discount fees. Now that is the cost of the fee, and we actually show it to you on our screen. Here's our rates, here's the charge, that's what you'll get if you, this, was, this is what you'll pay if you choose this rate. And this is the credit you'll get if you choose that rate. So we're very upfront and transparent at our office. There's nothing up our sleeves, we're not magicians, we're just loan officers trying to help veterans. So for streamlining, that's essentially, that's just a refi, right, of a lower yeah. rate? Mm -hmm. And there's no points involved with that? We, you could absolutely do a no point loan. You can do a whole new, new a new, uh, sorry. You can absolutely do a no cost streamline refinance, meaning you could refinance the exact loan amount that you have, if it's however it's structured. But yes, there could be points though if you decided to take a very low rate, right? You buy it down. Yeah, because interest interest rates are like this. There's what's called par rates, right? So let's just say par is somewhere between three and a quarter and three point one two five. That's par, right? So that's even, there's no cost and there's no credit. So, but let's say you want 2.75 and it's like two points in cost for that loan. Well, then you'd pay two points to get 2.75. Right. But if you wanted to get three and a half percent and there was a point and a half in credits, we could give you that credit to pay down, your, pay the rest of your closing costs, right? So it all depends on how you structure the loan. But there's, there's a, it could be no points. Of, Right. So if, if right now the prevailing rate is say three and a half, mm -hmm. and then a couple of years from now it goes to two and a quarter, yes, um, you could streamline, and that's the prevailing rate. So you're not buying the rate. Right, right. Down. So there'd be no points. You could just go straight into it, no problem. Yeah, you would still have to pay escrows, fees, and prepaid interest, and all those things. But there would be absolutely no points in our if that's the prevailing rate, correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We we try to not charge fees just just to charge fees. The only, the only non-allowable fees there are in the marketplace with us is escrow's fees. And because we don't charge uh, loan origination, they're absolutely, the veteran can pay those non-allowable fees from escrow. Because it's the VA guideline states that as long as the lender does not charge one point in loan origination, the veteran can pay up to that one point in uh, closing costs, for non-allowable closing costs. Okay, any other questions? What are the non what are non-allowable closing costs? Well, if your lender charges um, processing fees, underwriting fees, tax service fees, they're all non-allowable. Non -allowable. Um, escrow's closing fee is non-allowable. Notary fees are non-allowable. Tax service fees are non-allowable. Um, it could go on and on. Attorney's fees are non-allowable by the VA, right? So most transaction, it would be the escrow's closing fee and the notary fee. And then if your lender charges processing and underwriting fees. Those are the typical non-allowable fees. But, uh, so those are the deterrents on the seller's side. But if your lender doesn't charge one point in loan origination, there is no non-allowable fees. Right? You mentioned to get a realtor who knows what buildings or what real estate is off. Not eligible. What are some of those things that were implied by that? I said to find a VA knowledgeable realtor to help you avoid the pitfalls of getting into the wrong property. So if there's properties that are unpermitted, your realtor should be able to determine that for you. Unpermitted? There, there's just no permits for either the uh, bathroom or, yeah, unpermitted. Yeah, so the realtor to keep you out of the unpermitted um, houses or condos that are not approved or dilapidated so bad that it's not in good condition because the home needs to be in good condition. Yeah. What else? Yes, sir. If a veteran was interested in purchasing land and building a house, how would you um, counsel him on it? The question is, if a veteran wanted to purchase land and then build a house on it, um, VA does have this thing called a construction loan. However, I, because we are a, a residential lender, which means we loan money on house and lot together. So I wanted to find out who's these lenders that are doing these VA construction loans in Hawaii. And they said, Tony, I've been here since 1979 and not a single lender in Hawaii has done a VA construction loan. And I'll explain to you why. Do you guys know that as a lender I can actually charge more stuff on a conventional loan than I can on a VA loan? Right? So 
I can charge more conventionally, less paperwork conventionally. So human nature is to do what? Work less, make more, right? Yeah, we're the crazy ones that work for less and do more. Yeah. So, so what we tell people to do is, since there's nobody here doing the, convention, the construction loan, you do a conventional construction loan, and once you get owner occupancy or the um, complete notice of completion, then we can refinance the two, the land and the construction loan into a VA loan. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Was going to ask me that yeah. That's what I do. I that's what. Want to have them make a separate construction loan for the, the lot, and when I build my house, when the house got through, that was a six, six and a quarter percent construction loan. Right. Then when the house got through, and then I had to refinance again for the house now. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's and that's the best way to do it because you're going to have equity when you build your own home normally. So all you, even if we could only do 90%, you'd still be able to do it, right? Any other questions? Yes. If a condo is uh, not eligible, yeah. a condo can become eligible. How can a condo become eligible? His question is, is, if a condominium is not eligible on the VA approval list, how can you get it on the VA approval list? There's a bunch of documentations that actually, as a VA lender, we, we help with that. We've gotten over 20 condominiums on the island of Oahu approved. Uh, through this process and we have somebody in our office that's dedicated to help with that process. Uh, it can be a very painful process. Uh, it normally takes between 30 and 60 days so chances are if you're buying a home and you want to close soon you're not going to do one with a non-VA approved condo but we can get it approved should you need it to get, get it approved. Yeah. Oh, it's a blessing that you folks do that. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, it, it is very painful, and we've, we've done quite a few of them. Well, the, you're saying you can get any building approved? I didn't say we can get any building approved. I said we can. Just because we submit for approval does not mean we're going to automatically get it. I'm going to tell you, like Oaloa, for instance, in Mililani, the retirement community, will never get approved because it's age discriminatory. I, I as a veteran, cannot buy in there until I'm 55 years or older. Um, any, any condominium that has a front desk will never get approved, right? Co-ops won't get approved. So there's, there's certain ones that will not get approved. Here, here's what VA will look at when they go to approve a condominium. Their budgets, minutes, financial statements, RR105C, CCNRs, and bylaws. They're going to see is, is there any financial problems in that building? Is there any litigation in that building? All those things can stop a condominium from getting on the VA approval list. Yeah. Is there enough insurance? And new condominium projects, you need to have 70% sold before a veteran could finance in there. Because there's a place in Waipahu called Plantation that I don't even think has reached the 70% sold yet. And it's been on sale for like three or four years. Anybody know what happens to maintenance fees when there's not enough people paying them? Yeah, they kind of go up. Yeah, <laughs> so they don't want that for the veteran, right? What other questions? Yes. On the same condo question, is there an owner occupancy rate for VA? That's a great question. Is there any owner occupancy um, uh, percentage issues with VA? VA does not care if the veteran that's buying this one will be the very first owner to occupy it, meaning all of its investors. But this veteran is going to be the owner occupant. VA doesn't care. As long as the, owner, the veteran's going to occupy that property as their primary residence for one year, they can buy that home. And then they can rent it out after a year if they wanted to. Yeah, good question. What else? If yes. I bought a house in 2007 in Eva and the housing value tanked and appraised for much less than what I own on the house by about $50,000, uh, can I do a streamline or is there a program that I can get onto that would uh, allow me to refinance the house? The, his question was, if they bought a home uh, with his VA loan in 2007 and the value of the property has dropped, there's certain lenders that will allow us to do the VA streamline refinance with no appraisal. So if, the, if you did have one of those lenders, then we could do a no appraisal. It doesn't matter what the valuation of the home is. Roll the closing costs in a new loan. You just have to be current on your mortgage for the past 12 months, and you have to be employed. Yeah. So other than that, there's the... Um, the makinghomeaffordable.gov website that you could go to, makinghomeaffordable.gov. Makinghomeaffordable.gov is uh, part of the government's um, 
part of the government's streamline, not, I'm sorry, part of the government's refinancing program for all Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans. So if your loan is insured by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, you can still refinance even though the value is not there, as long as certain criteria is met. There's a 1-888 number also you can call. Um, it's on that website, makinghomeaffordable.gov. There's an 888 number you can call, and they'll walk you through the process. Yeah. It was set up back in 2008, I believe, makinghomeaffordable.gov. Anything else? Uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. I have two girls, yeah? One of my daughter take over this house I have now. Mm -hmm. Can I afford it? How can I help my second daughter? Can I take another VA loan, get a house for her, and she come and take over the mortgage? How much is your mortgage currently now, sir? Right now? Mm -hmm. 350000 Is that what you borrowed it in the beginning? Okay. You borrowed three hundred sixty thousand. Yeah. So your this party that loan is assumable three hundred sixty thousand. So let's just say you wanted to go buy another home for four hundred thousand, right? So that puts you at seven sixty. You're gonna have to put down twenty five percent of the ten thousand dollars, which is two thousand five hundred dollars. You could buy that home for four hundred thousand and move into it as your primary residence for one year. You occupy it, pay your mortgage for one year, and yes, indeed, you could let the second daughter assume that mortgage if you wanted to. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Your amount is $625,500 on the neighbor islands, yeah. Okay. What else? If there's no other questions, I got some questions for you. Number one, was this worth your time? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Perfect, it's worth your time. Well then, uh, did you get more than what you expected? Well, then I got a favor to ask you. If it was worth your time and you got more than what you expected, you know, we have at our office in YPO a room that could fit 60 veterans in it at one time. But here's what I know about when we advertise something as free. People always want to know, what's the catch? Well, have you been sold anything? Any DVDs, CDs, T-shirts? No, right? It's absolutely free. And you said it was worth your time. Second thing they think of is, if it's free, how valuable could it be? And again, you said it was worth your time and you got more than what you expected. So help us spread the word. In your folders, you have a flyer that has our website that they could go to to double check all upcoming seminars. They're absolutely free to veterans. Help spread the word to your fellow veterans that there's a place that they can go learn about the benefit absolutely free with no pressure to do anything, right? Then the last thing is you have a blue sheet of paper in your folder. The top part asks how we did. Ones are terrible, fives are great. Ones are terrible, fives are great. On the bottom of it, it asks, are you in the market to buy, sell, or refinance real estate? If you are in the market to buy, sell, or refinance real estate and you want us to contact you, put your information down on the bottom and we'll contact you to schedule an appointment to get you pre-approved. If you don't want to be contacted, what do you do, folks? Don't fill it out. I ain't got time to chase after you. All right. Just, it's okay. Don't fill out the bottom. Just fill out the top. All right. Any other questions before we go? Round of applause. Yeah. Uh, I thank you guys for that. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Thank you for coming, guys.